To replace your intercooler, you're going to need to safely lift and support the vehicle as well as drain the coolant. If you need additional assistance with those tasks, please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Once the vehicle is up in the air and the coolant is drained, begin by disconnecting the ground strap from the battery terminal red arrow and place the cable yellow arrow where it cannot accidentally come in contact with the battery while you are working. You will need to remove the charged air pipe. The charged air pipe and hoses run from the induction system and divert air before it reaches the throttle body. Red arrow. This charged air runs through a pipe that is secured by an 8mm bolt, blue arrow, and a T30 torque green arrow and enters the interior by a quick release fitting yellow arrow. At the front left side of the engine compartment is the air intake. There are two T20 torque screws holding this to the air box cover, red arrow one shown. Remove these. Remove the two T27 torque screws from the air diverter, red arrows. Note, you do not need to remove the engine cover to perform this job. Just get the intake hose to lock carrier out of the way. Remove the air diverter, red arrow, from the lock carrier. Remove the engine under tray. There are four T25 torque screws, red arrows, on each side holding the tray on. Remove them and slide the tray back out of the friction clips, yellow arrows, on the front of the air dam. Once the screws are removed, slide the tray back and down, red arrow. Unclip the wiring connection for the fans on the lower left corner, red arrow. You can disconnect the quick release connection, red arrow, on the lower right radiator hose and separate the hose from the radiator. Even though you have drained the coolant, coolant will still spill out from both the hose and the radiator, so be prepared to catch them. Note, the intercooler hose is directly below the radiator and will cause a large mess when the coolant pours out. If you are planning on reusing your coolant or just want to avoid a mess, I recommend you remove the standard hose clamp, red arrow, and remove the hose that way. With the hose disconnected, the remaining coolant will drain out of both the radiator, red arrow, and the hose. The turbo hose is directly in the way of the draining coolant, yellow arrow. So I use the two quick disconnects and remove the hose. You might want to do this as it really helps avoid a mess. Use the quick release clamp, red arrow, on the upper left hose and separate it from the radiator, yellow arrow. This will help break any remaining vacuum in the system, so be prepared for additional coolant to spill out of the lower hose. Now you will need to remove the bumper cover, red arrow, so please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional instructions with that task. Unclip the two clips, yellow arrow, that hold the Bowden cable connection, red arrow, to the cross member above the left headlight, green arrows. Open the connection housing lid, yellow arrow, and separate the lock Bowden cable, green arrow, from the cup, red arrow. On the front right side close to the radiator, unclip the wiring connection, red arrow, and separate it from the connection for the sensor, yellow arrow. There are two T30 torque screws, yellow arrow, one on each side, holding the radiator, intercooler, and AC condenser to the lock carrier. You will need to remove the T25 torque screw, red arrow, that holds the plastic bumper and light support to give you access to the T30 screws. Lift the support out of the way and then remove the torque screws on both sides. Remove the two T25 torque screws that hold the level sensor to each headlight frame. Red arrow, one side shown. On the lower left side, disconnect the large wiring harness, red arrow. Disconnect the quick release from the lower left turbo pipe, red arrow, and separate the pipe from the intercooler. Disconnect the quick release from the lower right turbo pipe, red arrow, and separate that pipe from the intercooler. 
Remove the two T30 Torx screws, red arrows, holding the upper lock carrier to the fenders on each side. You will need to support the lock carrier before removing the final bolts, as once these bolts are removed, there is nothing supporting the lock carrier. Have a friend help or use a floor jack to support the weight of the carrier, then remove the four 16 millimeter bolts on each side of the lock carrier, red arrows. The AC lines are still connected, so you need to remove the lock carrier forward, then tilt the radiator intercooler condenser back towards the engine and pull it up and out of the two rubber grommets it sits in, red arrows. With the lock carrier removed, you can see the fan, shroud, radiator, intercooler, condenser still attached to the AC lines, red arrow. Remove the fan shroud by removing the four T27 torque screws holding the fans and shroud to the radiator, red arrows. Separate the radiator from the intercooler by removing the four T30 torque screws, red arrows. You can now separate the radiator, red arrow, from the intercooler, yellow arrow. You will now be left with the intercooler attached to the AC condenser. The AC lines are still connected and pressurized to the system, so be careful when working around the fittings and do not put too much stress on the hoses. On the right side of the condenser, there are three T30 torque screws, red arrows, holding the intercooler in place. Remove the three screws. Use care when working around the two lower screws, red arrows, as you're working near the pressurized lines of the AC unit. On the left side of the condenser, remove the two T30 Torx screws, red arrows. There are two mounting pieces, red arrows, that isolate the intercooler from vibrations. They are unidirectional and will only fit onto the intercooler, yellow arrow, in one direction. Replacement stock intercoolers usually do not come with these pieces, so do not lose them. Inspect the rubber dampeners for damage and replace as needed. Installation is the reverse of removal. Take your time and do not forget to refill the cooling system. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.